to be live in Los Angeles. When we get the Niners going back to the NFC Championship, and of course, the Kings are rolling. Let's bring in our first guest of the new show. He is a longtime 49ers reporter, of course, with NBC Sports Bay Area. I think when he started covering the team, Morgan was at three. Oh, I I actually think when I started covering the team, I was three. So <laughs> we're even. Dude, yeah. Matt, we appreciate you uh, taking time. Uh, little, some people may not know this, Morgan, yeah. but Matt, a big Matthew Delva Dova fan. Yes. No, huge Matthew Delva Dova fan. And I think every yes. single night he's really mad at Mike Brown for not putting him in. Is that correct, Matt? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, no, I'm, I live about I don't know, two miles from St. Mary's. And so I go to all the games. I, I've known that Mike Brown and Randy Bennett have been friends for a long time. Um, and it was kind of cool to hear Mike Brown give him a shout out the other night. But yeah, no, definitely. I, I was... Uh, Saw all of Delvadova's games through his four-year career at St. Mary's, and it's uh, it's been a lot of fun to to track him. And come on, got to get him more minutes. Yeah, the Kings have to maybe get some applause, but dude. I think he's he honestly has meant a lot to this team. Just a veteran presence. Well, Matt, um, you've been covering this team, this Niners team, for a long, long time. I'm curious for you, where does this Brock Purdy story ring for you? I mean. You know, it, it hasn't been written yet, at least not in its entirety. But I mean, I can't think of anything more wild than what they've done and what they've done with Brock Purdy. I mean, when you think about all the teams that have gotten, you know, this far in franchise history and teams that, you know, won 13 games in the regular season. Now that's, of course, up to 15 games when you include the postseason. You know, yeah, there were a couple of years there. The one year, 2019, of course, with Garoppolo when they had that good team and went to the Super Bowl. And, and last year uh, with Garoppolo until he got injured in the postseason and he just wasn't the same guy. But, you know, usually these these kinds of teams have a Hall of Fame caliber quarterback, you know, whether it's Joe Montana or Steve Young. And so, you know, th there was a point, I, I think up until my final roster projection before the start of the regular season, I had Brock Purdy on the outside looking in because I thought, well, you know, they like him. Sure. But I'm sure they'll end up releasing him and just have him, you know, in their building on the practice squad. And so I don't know if the 49ers got Intel that another team might be looking to add him to their 53 man roster, or they just said, you know, probably the latter, you know, they probably just said he's so good. We want to keep him around. We don't want to take any chances of losing him. And what a what, what a decision that was because they've kept – usually they keep two quarterbacks on their active roster. This year they decided to keep three. And who would have ever thunk that you go to your third-string quarterback and the team is better because of it? But you cannot make an argument that the 49ers offense – you know, yesterday's game – what was, uh, you know, not following that arc of, you know, the team scoring a lot of points and kind of tearing it up offensively. But you cannot deny that this offense has taken a significant step forward with Brock Purdy, a quarterback. Yeah. And I think one of the coolest parts, too, is seeing how all these bets seem to really be rallying behind him. I mean, what do you think is really impressing them about him and his game? I think it's that – he is one of them. You know, these guys like Fred Warner and George Kittle and uh, Trent Williams and Nick Bosa, and I could go on and on and on. These guys are all serious football players. You know, they're they're not guys who do a whole lot of extracurricular stuff. You know, they love to play the game. You know, they play with passion. Uh, they're students of the game. And you know, the Fort Harris have done a good job of, of finding these guys who are all about football and who take it seriously and make sure that nothing kind of gets in the way of, of success. And I think what Brock Purdy did was he came in and you know, he kept his mouth shut, but he worked hard. He studied hard when he got on the practice field, he did all the right things. He never repeated a mistake. He never was, you know, at, at a loss for what to do 
you know, he did, he put in the work and the veteran guy saw that. And I think he, there was a very high opinion of him in the locker room, even before he stepped on the field. And then once he played against the Miami Dolphins, then their street cred of, you know, not only does this guy do all the work, but he's also a gamer. You know, he's not one of these guys who wilts under pressure. You know, he showed poise, composure, self-confidence, and he wasn't afraid to tell the veteran guys, you know, hey, shut up. You know, I'm in the huddle now. And so he just won the respect. I think he, he won the respect of them with what he did behind the scenes. But then, you know, when there's 65, 70,000 people watching you, what you do then, that's how you truly gain the trust of your teammates. Man, even yesterday too, when you're going up against the Dallas defense that has that speed, that obviously is a good defense. They did a great job yesterday. I love that he didn't get rattled. I feel like that was a big test for him. It's like, okay, you've been scoring like 40 points in a game, 35 points. The offense is rolling. How are you going to handle life when there's maybe a little more adversity? Things aren't what they have been. And in that second half, I mean, he made some big time plays still and was able to not make any mistakes. He had that one near pick with Diggs. But other than that, I know the numbers don't jump out to you, but I, I, I think it was just impressive to see how he carried himself under different circumstances. Absolutely. I mean, look at Dak Prescott, you know, look at all the, the experience he has and he's a franchise quarterback and he's, you know, he's making whatever 40 million a year and Brock Purdy comes in there and yeah, Brock Purdy didn't light it up. You know, they only scored one touchdown in the game, but Brock Purdy played a better game than Dak Prescott. There's no question about it. You know, Prescott threw the two interceptions and could have had a third one there at the end. Uh, but what Purdy does is he gives his team a chance and he, he has a very good perspective on, you know, kind of living to play another down, you know, throwing the ball away. There was a play uh, in the first half, I guess it was where, you know, he kind of spun out of the pocket. He had, you know, defenders coming at him, including Micah Parsons, and he spun around and kind of lost his footing, but stayed up and had the presence of mind to be able to throw it out the back of the end zone right before taking a big time hit. So he's just done all the right things. The only, you know, the only play yesterday where you go, wow, that, that was really too close for comfort was right at the end of the first half when he it's held on to the ball way too long. You know, he, that ball should have come out quickly, come out out of bounds and, you know, three or four seconds left on the clock. And then Robbie gold tries to kick a field goal instead. I, I'm not sure what he was thinking. Um, finally, when he threw it away, I think the, uh, you know, the scoreboard operator did the 49ers a solid by, you know, leaving one second on that clock. But Ooh, now he's just like theory. You think they did him a favor there? <laughs> no, I just think other than that, you know, Brock Purdy has done. I mean, you couldn't ask for anything more than what he's given this team. No, and that's exactly it. And I think when you look at this whole situation, before we ask you about this matchup against the Eagles, Brock Purdy, can we just say it? He's the future for the 49ers right now, right? I, I can't imagine that they have seen what Brock Purdy has done and then go in any other direction. Because uh, I think, you know, what the reason they moved on from Jimmy Garoppolo, you know, the, the public reason was, you know, the injuries. Mm -hmm. um, but let's, let's just include that as a reason. Uh, Brock Purdy was healthy through his entire college career. He's been healthy, you know, more, you know, more consistently already than Jimmy Garoppolo or Trey Lance ever has been. I don't think that Kyle Shanahan liked, uh, I put, put it to that. I think Kyle Shanahan, now I know Kyle Shanahan was frustrated with Garoppolo and how he saw the field and how, um, you know, he ran the offense. I think Purdy has been spot on and, Purdy's even making plays going to the fourth quarterback or the fourth receiver in the progression. You know, even the play yesterday, the, the Kittle catch that kind of sparked the 49ers, he wasn't even in the progression. And then Kittle saw an opening in the middle of the field. He put his hand out for Purdy. Purdy saw him and delivered the pass. So it's, I think the big reason they, they wanted to get away from Garoppolo and ultimately go with Trey Lance was because of, the mobility, the escapability, the, 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 
the aspect of being able to make plays when nothing's there. Well, you know, we haven't seen really much of all at all of Trey Lance, but everything the 49ers wanted their next quarterback to be after Garoppolo, that's Brock Purdy. Maybe, maybe without the like cannon arm, which yeah. Trey Lance has, but his arm is good enough and it's going to get stronger. He just has this it factor. And I, I just can't imagine, you know, after, after going, uh, you know, I guess it's eight games now since he came into the lineup and he came into that lineup uh, with the Frenchers trailing to the Dolphins seven to three in the first quarter. So, you know, I know it's not considered a win for him, but between the three of us, let's let's agree that was a win for Brock Purdy. So they're eight and zero with him at the quarter, quarterback position. I know we're up against it, but I have to ask you: early thoughts in this match of NFC Championship headed to Philly. Uh, how do you think this may go down on Sunday? I think it's going to be a battle, like, like it was Sunday against the Cowboys. I mean, the intensity of that game and the way the players spoke after the game, that was that was intense. And I think the Eagles and Cowboys are comparable, just as I think the Eagles, the Cowboys, and the 49ers are all comparable. Those are the three best teams in the NFC. The Eagles are coming off just a, a walloping of the New York Giants. The 49ers probably have a few more bruises. Uh, they were drained after that game. I think it's going to be great. And I think it's, you know, it's a, a, a great defensive line of the Eagles, a great offensive line of the Eagles. Um, you know, probably I'm trying to think here. Yeah. Probably the best, you know, if they, if they, they had an MVP for the NFC and an MVP for the AFC, the AFC as will be the NFL, uh, offensive player or MVP of the league, that would be Patrick Mahomes. But in the NFC, it's probably Jalen Hurts. And we just saw, you know, what they did when he wasn't on the field. So I, I just think it's a, a great matchup. And I think the 49ers have probably the more recognizable star power, but the Eagles have every bit the star power from young guys who are flying around playing great football on the defensive side. I think it's going to be an epic battle. Matt, we can't thank you enough for making time for us today. I know it's been a busy stretch. Kick ass this week. I know everyone's going to check out the 49ers podcast. You can work at NBCSportsBarrier.com. Matt, thank you so thank much. Thank you. All right, Deuce, Mo, thank you so much.